Hi everyone. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss a topic called cheese. Yes, cheese is a type of fermented food. And this cheese is one of the oldest human uh, foods and is thought to have been developed approximately 8,000 years ago. Yes, 8,000 years ago. Whereas uh, our bread is going to be of uh, approximately 4,000 to 5,000 years ago. Today, cheese making is a major industrial level uh, production throughout the world. And it is going to produce approximately about 10 million tons per annum. And at present, we are going to have nearly 2,000 varieties of cheese produced throughout the world. Then what is this cheese and uh, who defined it, all these things, let's see. So cheese is defined as a consolidated curd of milk in which fat is entrapped by coagulated casein. So coagulated casein, what is this casein? Casein is a protein that is present in the milk, okay. And uh, it is a white, tasteless, odorless protein. And it is going to be precipitated from milk when we are going to add the, an enzyme called as renin. And this renin is an enzyme extracted from the stomach of cows. And the rennet, what is the difference between renin and the rennet is, rennet is the curdled milk from the stomach of calf. Whereas renin is the enzyme that is ex extracted or uh, essential for the curdling of the milk is going to be called as renin. Then what is a curd and whey? The curd is a solid clusters formed when milk separates into solids and liquids. Whereas the way the liquid part, the liquid part separating from the coagulation and curling of milk is going to be curled as whey. So these are the terms, just keep it in mind that uh, in the further uh, thing that we use these terms only. Then you must recollect what is a renin, casein, whey, curd, all these things. Okay. And this... Uh, Curd uh, is going to be of uh, very, very essential in the preparation of our cheese. Now, this cheese word comes from the Latin word called cashews. Okay. So, cashews, uh, but actually in the modern uh, world, the casein is also derived from this curd, isn't it? And however, the earliest source is from the Proto-Indo-European root where they call this cheese as quat. So quat means uh, to ferment or to become sour. So that's how the cheese is going to be a fermented sour taste uh, product. So uh, that's how they define the cheese. Now this cheese uh, having some characteristics, physical characters. Uh, one is the protein coagulation due to proteolytic enzymes and much of the water content as I told you whey uh, is going to be removed, removed in the form of whey. Typically, uh, if you are going to take a hundred percent of a milk in which you will get only 10 percent of the cheese. Okay. And coming to the composition of the cheese, what are the things that are present in this cheese? Uh, cheese mainly constitutes of fat, uh, then protein obviously, then moisture content, minerals, vitamins which differ greatly with the variety of products. So depending upon all these uh, components of the cheese, there are the different types of the classification of the cheeses. Let's see that one. So first of all, the classification of the cheese is based on a number of factors. Now only I told you. So depending upon the raw materials that they are using, which type of the milk, either it is a cow milk, sheep milk or whatever the milk and the type of consistency that it is going to have, then the appearance, that is what is the internal appearance, what is the exterior appearance, all the things and obviously fat content, then moisture content and then ripening methods, that means you are allowing the cheese to ferment for aging. So that also going to have the one of the factor for the classification of the cheeses. So let's see the first one, the types of cheese based on the moisture content. So how much moisture content is present? Depending upon that, we are having the three types of classifications of the cheese. One is a soft cheese where you are going to have about 50 to 80 percent of the moisture content. Then we call them as soft cheese or we classify them under the soft cheese. 
the examples of the uh, this uh, uh, soft cheeses are cottage your sour cream camembert tea and cashew tea so here is going to have your camembert tea cheese okay and then you are going to have your rock a uh, semi soft cheese where you are going to have a rocky forty okay danish blue limburg and gouda are the examples of semi soft cheese where the moisture content is about 39 to 50% and then the hard cheese where the moisture content is less than 39% so examples are cheddar and emmental so here is a structure of an emmental okay and then very hard cheese where the moisture content is still low of uh, maybe less than 34 maybe or 25% the examples are grana romino and parmesan etc so this is how depending upon the moisture content you are having these type of classification one is a soft cheese semi soft cheese hard cheese and very hard cheese okay then come in the next type of the classification based on the curd formation so based on the curd formation whether it is made up of a acid curd cheese or cottage cheese or rennet curd cheese that means either it is from the bacterial formation due to the acidification or it is due to the rennet curd cheese so example is a cottage cheese is uh, due to the acidification and the rennet means the enzyme rennet is involved in the curdling of the milk so that's why that is called as a rennet curd cheese examples of the camembert cheese and limburg cheese so these are the best examples uh, of these uh, uh, type of cheeses based on the curd formation now we have seen the classification based on the moisture content and classification based on the curd then we'll go with the classification based on the ripening so ripening is aging okay so coming to the ripening so uh, we are going to have whether it is a ripened or unripened ripened means allowed for the fermentation or aging is going to be called as ripening so example is rocky forty danish blue limburg and gouda and where is the unripened that means you are not you are using immediately after the formation of the uh, curdling or coagulum so that is going to be called as unripened cheese that has not aged is being called as unripened so highly uh, this unripened cur curd or the cheese is going to be of uh, uh, highly perishable and uses pasteurized milk and has a mild flavor it is not going to have a high flavor but here uh, in the ripen you are going to have uh, aging process varies from 2 weeks to 2 years that means continuously it is going on ripening and these cheeses are separated based on this uh, texture like a very hard semi soft or soft okay and these are the examples of these kind of the ripening and and ripen so here is the figure where it is a sour cream or a soft cheese which is which one is the unripened one okay then coming to here is a rocky forty so you can uh, here is a ripened one which is going to have the aging process then coming to the next type of the classification uh, based on the mode of ripening see here this is ripening whether it is a ripened or unripened and here is a mode of ripening that means whether it is a bacterial ripen or a mold that means a fungal ripen so depending upon that again we are having another classification that is bacterial ripen the bacteria which are involved in this kind of ripening of cheese are lactococci lactobacilli leuconostoc propionyo bacteria and brevi bacteria examples limburger brick gouda and cheddar cheese so these are uh, cheddar and limburger are the most often used uh, cheeses okay and then mold ripened is going to be rocky 40 so this is a figure of a rocky 40 that is because of a mold ripened one the best example for this kind of the cheeses is a pencilium species so this is how we are having the classification of uh, cheeses depending upon the uh, what are the things that we are having one is the moisture content then you are going to have the curd formation then the based on ripening then mode of ripening okay so here are the various types of the cheeses that we are having okay so let's have a quick review of all those cheeses then we'll move to the further so here is a limburg cheese 
so this is a figure of uh, lemon bug cheese okay so this lemon bug cheese is a type of cheese where very little content of the salt is added in it very mild okay so that's how this is going to be uh, called as lemon bug and this promotes a different flora of organisms on the surface of the cheese and thus a different flavor is obtained then coming to the Linderkranzer's cheese so this is your Linderkranzer's cheese okay so here it is also similar to the lemon bug cheese but here you are going to have a, a little bit more salt when compared to the lemon bug cheese and then coming to your camembert tea cheese so here is the camembert tea cheese so the curd retains much larger portion of the whey so here you are going to see much whey in it that means the liquid portion and this is molded into small cakes so here we are able to see this in the form of a cake and placed in a curing room the temperature is usually not very low so we will maintain at uh, nearly to room temperatures okay molds soon cover the surface so here what you are seeing the bluish uh, thing is all about the molds like a uh, geotrichum candidum or pencilium particularly so the species that is involved in this camembert cheese aging is pencilium camembert okay the camembert mold these molds are capable of utilizing the organic acids as food when the proteolysis occasion occurred by this mold development has penetrated into the center of the cheese and then we will think that the ripening is completed it is believed that the proteolytic changes in the texture of these cheese ripening are due to the pencilium not because of the geotrichum then what is this geotrichum is doing it is enhancing the flavor so that is all about the camembert cheese then the next one is the american cheese isn't it so uh, american cheese is going to be of uh, looking like this okay and the for the preparation of it the curd is precipitated after acidification with the rennet so here they are using the rennet the whey is drained off uh, and the curd but a little amount is retained the curd is salted obviously every uh, cheese is going to have the salting salting process that we will uh, go in the process okay we we'll learn them in the process of uh, cheese making now the cheese is going to be stored and gradually develops a flower due to the slow bacterial action now its flower depends somewhat on its age so more the age more the flower the older cheese the greater the degree of decomposition of protein into amino acids and then that sharps the flower so this is all about the american cheese then coming the swiss cheese okay so what is this uh, swiss cheese so for the preparation of this this swiss cheese especially fresh sweet milk is used and the bacteria involved in it is the streptococcus dermophilus okay now uh, after adding this one some propionic bacteria are also going to be added to enrich the flavor and the taste okay uh, this Swiss cheese is going to be of more familiar with its characteristic flavor and the gases produced uh, causing the holes in it. So here you are able to see these are the holes that are produced because of the bacteria that is present in it. Okay, then coming to the last one is a Rocky Forty cheese looking so nice. So the best uh, known cheese made from the sheep milk. So these are all can be made with the different kinds of uh, animals milk. But this Rocky Forty is especially made with the sheep milk. And the uh, organism involved in the fermentation of this cheese is a Pencilium Rocky Forty. And this uh, is going to be the cut surface of this cheese shows a greenish, uh, see here, a greenish blue molding. Uh, mottling due to the presence of specific mold that specific mold is your pencilium rocky forty it has been found that the characteristic aroma and flavor of this rocky forty cheese uh, this rocky forty cheese is due to the production of the compound called as methyl amyl ketone from the milk uh, fat so that means the fat that is present containing methyl amyl ketone compound is being derived because of this pencilium rocky 40 okay so this is all uh, about the few uh, other types of the cheeses that just 
I want to give an uh, introduction to all these things. So this is our Limamberki cheese, this is your Linderkranz cheese, this is the Camberberti cheese and American cheese and then Swiss cheese where you are having a nice uh, holes in it okay because of the propionic acid uh, bacteria and then this is a rocky forty. it is also looking so emmy uh, because of this bluish green color in the middle of the white color isn't it so then we will move to the next slide uh, our next thing is the production of uh, cheese so what is the production of cheese so obviously how do you produce the cheese is going to be the production of cheese so here in the process of production of cheese we are mainly having the three steps one is the curdling okay then separation of the curd formation then ripening of the cheese what are the three steps one is the curdling and then separation of the curd formation then ripening of the cheese so coming to the first one curdling again contains three parts what are those three parts one is a milk preparation then acidification then coagular formation so here is the curdling so if you see here the milk was uh, pasteurized and then it was uh, acidified with the adding of certain enzymes or the bacteria and then the milk was converted into the curdled form okay now that curdle is going to be called as coagulated form that is going to be called as coagulum formation milk coagulation occurs due to two distinct activities what are those two distinct activities one is the inoculation with bacterial cultures i told you and the second one is incubation with rennet uh, casein protein gives casein hydrolysis products so that's how you are going to have the two things here and the bacteria streptococcus lactis streptococcus cremoris for the incubation of about 37 degrees centigrade combined with lactobacillus lactis and lactobacillus bulgaricus and now this bacteria and then incubation with rennet uh, cleaves this cleaves the casein protein and gives casein hydrolysis products that is nothing but your coagulum now after this curdling finish next one is a separation of the curd from the liquid part which we call it as a whey so coagulum is heated at 37 degrees centigrade and cooled. This eliminates the remaining rennet activity and separates to some extent the watery fluid. See here is a watery fluid that is being called as whey and this all the uh, blocks is going to be termed as coagulum. Okay. Now the curd is separated from the whey and then salted and mixed with the enzymes. Okay and the bricks pressed so these uh, these things are going to be pressed very hardly to remove excess moisture to enable proper ripening so now the next step is going to be of your ripening so that's how these are all going to be kept in the things and those were all ripened so ripening involves changes in the chemical and physical properties of our uh, cheese and accompanied by the development of characteristic uh, flower during ripening the curd is going to is gradually digested by enzymes and mature cheese acquires the firm or plastic or soft body uh, characteristics of the particular variety and then coming to the preservation so once it was done you are going to have the preservation now let's see whole thing uh, that uh, each step that is happening in the process of this uh, cheese production so first of all uh, whatever the milk that whether it is a cow milk or whatever the milk you are going to take so that's uh, you are supposed to take okay then you have to first after taking what we are supposed to do we have to sterilize it isn't it so to me uh, the cheese is generally made from a milk of cow sheep goat and buffalo so whatever the source of milk it is it is essential that it is produced by a healthy animals that is what we have to remember now this milk is going to be generally standardized so what we are supposed to do first is a standardization what do you mean by standardization the composition I told you what are the components of uh, cheese containing isn't it so that composition of the milk may be adjusted for fat by adding 
cream, some cream, or by removing part of the fat. So that means if excess fat is there, that is being removed. If less fat is there, a cream is going to be added to the milk. And or by adding skim milk or non-fat milk solids. So that's how you're making the standardization. Now the milk is standard and after that, that milk has, the standardized milk have to go for the clarification. So what is this clarification? The removal of extraneous matter from milk by centrifugal force in a clarifier is called as clarification. Any other external material is there that have to be removed and that is going to be done by centrifugation in a clarifier and that process is called as clarification and after the clarification the mul the this milk is going to be of a homogenized and that process is called as homogenization so what is this uh, homogenization this is a pressure where the milk is pumped under a pressure so by having a more pressure, you are going to have this uh, uh, milk is going to be pumped. So that process is called as homogenization. So what is happening in this homogenization? This, in this homogenization, the flat globules are disrupted and dispersing uh, them throughout the milk and thereby increasing the viscosity of the milk which is very very essential for the manufacture of this cheese okay so homogenization is nothing but the disrupting and dispersing the flat globules throughout the milk evenly and thereby increasing the homogenization viscosity of the milk so now we have discussed about the uh, taking of the milk then standardization of the milk and then clarifying and then homogenization so we did it now we have to go for the pasteurization step so once you're done with this one pasteurization is going to be done to destroy the undesirable bacteria without affecting the physical and chemical properties of milk this is very important the pasteurization should destroy the undesirable bacteria simultaneously it should not change the physical and chemical properties of the milk and then uh, you have to cool the this milk okay and after that you are supposed to add the rennet as well as your starter culture so here the starter culture as we have discussed is a lactic acid bacteria like a, a lac leuconostoc lactobacilli lactococci and streptococci we had it and we are going to add them as a starter culture and then coming to the addition of the rennet rennet curdled milk or from the cow's stomach so both together are being added to the cooled milk the uh, cooled pasteurized milk now after that to the components uh, if uh, any calcium is going to be lost from the milk additional calcium chloride is added this calcium chloride will uh, improve the firmness of the cheese and then uh, what is happening during the process isn't it now this rennet brings about the coagulation of milk okay as the coagulum increases water holding capacity decreases and the coagulum shrinkage begins what happens the shrinkage begins now this is a crucial phase in the manufacture of all varieties of cheese as it relates to the physical condition of the curd now once it has done sodium chloride is added to all cheeses at some stage in their manufacture so now you are going to have the coagulator once it shrinks you are going to explode the milk uh, explosion of the milk where we call it as a whey and then you are going to do the salting after the salting uh, in their manufacture to suppress the growth uh, is mainly done the salting and then you are allowed for the maturation to give the flavor of the curd and finally preservation so this maturation and preservation is comes under the ripening so what is happening in the ripening so this involves the changes in the physical and the chemical properties of the cheese accompanied by the development of characteristic flour also that is very important isn't it in the production of the cheese uh, along with the taste the flour also have to be there so that is going to be done in this ripening process during the ripening the curd is gradually digested by the enzymes okay and mature cheese acquires the prim or plastic or soft uh, body characteristic of a particular variety so this is what i have told you what is happening in this one okay 
so then uh, finally you are supposed to preserve the cheese isn't it so in general lower the moisture content the longer the keeping quality of the cheese so as it is going to have the less quantity uh, content of the moisture it can be preserved for a longer time so that's how acid content of the cheese also determines the shelf life of the cheese acidity prevents the bacterial growth and it will the salting also prolongs the shelf life so this is how you are going to have the different steps that are followed in the manufacture of the cheese so milk uh, standardization then clarification then homogenization then pasteurization uh, at the temperature of about 72 degrees centigrade for 15 seconds and then cool it and this pasteurized cool milk is going to have the addition of the rennet and the started culture where the rennet is going to start at culture is going to acidify and the rennet is going to start a coagulation of the milk after that this coagulation is getting slowly uh, down to the from the water that means it gets deposited at the bottom and now the explosion of the milk is going to done then uh, after the explosion the bricks of the cheese are going to be salted for stopping the growth of the bacteria all those things and then they were ripened that is nothing but the maturation and then they were preserved okay so this is all the steps of your cheese production so if you see here is a total figure so milk raw milk and then pasteurized and then it was standardized and then it was going to have the cool and then from one side you have addition of uh, starter culture and from the other culture you are going to have the rennet so both together going to form the coagulum so now after the formation of the curling it is going to have the mixing such that the coagulum is going to broke down into small and then stirring and cooking okay now the curds are settled at the bottom and the whey was removed okay and now the curds are going to be transferred into the milling where it is going to be far fine powder or in the form of bricks uh, for the salting process okay now from here itself directly we can use the fresh cheese or fresh cream i told you unripened cheese and they can also be grown into the molds that means into the concerned shapes okay where the pressing is going on to remove the excess water and it can be ripened so ripening is going to decide the uh, quantity uh, quality of the cheese and the longevity of the cheese so this is a total diagram of the production of cheese okay let's come to the next one cheese health and nutrition so what is this cheese and what are the things that we are going to have from the uh, cheese consumption so what it is having the nutritional factors and how, what are the health benefits of it okay so here is a cheese constitutes high concentration of essential nutrients isn't it obviously high quality proteins and calcium this is very important proteins as well as the calcium along with this proteins and calcium it also contains some minerals like phosphorus magnesium zinc vitamin a vitamin b12 and riboflavin so this is all the nutritional aspects of uh, cheese then what are the health benefits of consuming this cheese so the first one is the bone health cheese is high in calcium content i already told you and rich in vitamin b required for strengthening our bones and cartilages obviously and vitamin b in cheese helps body absorb and distribute the calcium so this is what then fights cavity the high calcium content in cheese also helps uh, and keeping our teeth strong and prevent cavities so that's how it is another important then come in the health healthy skin so vitamin B in cheese is useful to maintain the sup, uh, supple, healthy and growing uh, your glowing skin. Okay. And then healthy hair. Obviously low fat cottage cheese is great source of protein. So once you have a very good protein in your body, obviously it maintains your healthy skin, healthy hair, all the shiny hair. Okay. Next. Fifth. Reduce high blood pressure. Vitamin B that is present in the cheese is found to be useful in reducing high blood pressures and then next one sixth one is osteoporosis osteoporosis can be treated with a protein calcium and vitamin rich diet which are abundantly found in the cheese obviously so cheese can be a part of the diet of those suffering from osteoporosis then coming to the uh, helps reduce migraine how do you 
think this cheese is related to your migraine? Yes. Cheese is packed with calcium and calcium intake reduces migraine pain and attacks. So if you are going to consume the more calcium food, obviously it reduces, it helps in reducing the migraine. Okay, then strengthening your immune system. Sometimes cheese helps build a strong immune system to help our body fight infections and diseases. Then coming to the prevent cancer. Conjugated linoleic acid and sphingolipids found in this cheese play an important part in cancer prevention. That's how the studies have come out. Then the great sleep. Tryptophan and amino acid that is found in cheese helps reducing our stress. Once you are not having any stress, obviously it stimulates the good sleep. So that's how. These are all the health benefits that we are getting because of the consumption of this cheese. Okay, so that's how we are going to have the end of this topic called as cheese. So in this cheese uh, topic, we had gone through the types of classification of the cheese and then the production of the cheese and then the health uh, benefits of consuming this cheese. Okay, thank you.